This is Excalibur Heavy Bal Cruiser. And since my exams are finally over, I can now return back to Nova Drift. As promised, I will showcase a, a pretty ridiculous build. Now since I had to do a few tries to get the recording, it'll be pretty obvious that I've done several statements of this build before and I won't sound as enthusiastic as I once did. Nevertheless, I'm still gonna do it because it's just too cool to pass up. Now we picked up Thermal Lance for a reason, and it is because Charge Shield is especially good with Thermal Lance, as I've showcased over 5 months ago. Now for the body, it comes down to two choices, Spectre, not Spectre, but Sentinel or Assault. Assault has more firepower and mobility reduction resistance. And even though the 10%, even though the minus 10% maximum shield is a malice for most builds, in this case, it's actually an upside. Sentinel does have the advantage of much larger shield effect radius, but even so, I think I'm gonna pick up Assault just because I prefer its mobility and its firepower. Like, especially the early game is a lot more bearable with Assault than Sentinel. Well then, time to fight the new and improved Spitfire. And just like that, I've reduced it down to half health. Even when it's the improved version, he's still kind of frail. There goes one of his pulsars, and next up... I'm really not sure which one's gonna go out first. One of the pulsars or the main guy himself. My vote is on the main guy, and the vote was immediately rendered true. Okay, gotta take care of this slightly larger pulsar as well. And yeah, gonna have to take care of these guys as well. With that done, time to fry some calamari. From fried, some fried metallic space calamari, I guess. But since I'm also metallic, it doesn't really apply to me. It is still Calamari after all. Even if it belongs to outer space. Well, that cargo train gave me enough experience for 6 upgrade points stocked up. Now I'm gonna pick up Shield Effect Radius because I do want that pretty early on. Then there's Ataraxia of course. Focus Shields. Hull strength is nice. Then we have Juggernaut and Weaponized Shield. Yeah, I kind of focused on completing the existing mod trees over opening up new mod trees. This strategy may bite me back though, so eventually in the late game I'll stop doing that and just try to speed run my way into obtaining the op, op into this build. Okay, got it. Not gonna lie, these little guys are not fun to fight. That's a lot of experience. Now we can take Bravado. Also, it's kind of sad that Recursor is playing so early on in the game. Well then, no choice but to take Candescence.
burst fire is pretty nice. Gotta hit these guys around again, and now we have stabilization and regeneration. Along with drones, I for myself would probably want drones because I like to augment my firepower about now. Ah yes, we can also take corrosion. This will reduce my weapon firepower, but eventually, once the shields are transferred to my drones, spoiler alert, it'll make way more sense. Next up, we're probably gonna take subsumption. Because I do like advanced engineering as well, and subsumption is a good way of getting a bunch of bunch more drones. If you really want them to. I really love Dreadnought. This guy is one of the coolest bosses in all of Nova Drift. And his music theme is also amazing. In fact, I'm still torn on whether this is actually better than Helion or not. But it absolutely is up there. Like, it won't take me that much convincing for me to put this above Helion. The two are really close together in terms of being the best boss team in all of Nova Drift. I mean, Recursor is still my favorite, it's still my baby, but... Hyperadian is not far off. It is pretty darn close. This is where it gets really good. The goosebumps are real. Unfortunately, the fight ended kind of prematurely. Because this is a decent build for the early game. It, especially since I have these damn drones. Now I can take up Radiant Shield and Advanced Engineering. I really need that. This guy's just really taking a while to be destroyed. Now I can go straight for the center. Unfortunately, this also means I gotta take down a whole bunch of those turrets as well. Yeah, their tactical link is pretty strong. It's literally a laser beam linking them together. Now I'm just gonna try not to get hit and... Let the drones take care, take care of this one. I'm also going to be taking Warpath. Which right now doesn't make too much sense, but... Once this tumultuous wave is over, it makes way more sense. Come on. Nice. And just like that, I have two upgrades. I don't really care for any of them, so gonna reroll them around, and power reserves is nice, very nice. Oh boy, that is a big fleet of a big old bulwark and some swarmlings. Also, probably gonna try to set them on loose now. Ah, yes, purification. I also need this. Ah, yeah. Now that I have assault drones, I will periodically need to unleash them and then recall them back when they are way too close to an explosion. Ow! Got scraped by by the Celestial, but whatever. I'm gonna unleash them now. Oh. Well, 
Oh, gotta recall them again. Now we have these guys, and I don't care for any of them. Unlike here, where shield cooldown is absolutely worth it. Not just because it's a good mod in general, but... It also helps my shield come back faster. Which is an important theme of this build. It's a shield breaking build after all. So I definitely will be taking it. Now this is a tragic accident, cause I'm not gonna get all the all of the experience. Even so, I now have flash shielding. Okay, gonna make sure my drones aren't too close to the tracer trails. Also, fun fact: while doing a previous while doing this run previously, doing the same build, I died to Tracer Trails pretty badly. <laughs> it was like really, really unfair at how quickly I got melted by it. I was actually really surprised by how much damage it did at such a short notice. Oh, I gotta get up there. And I'm gonna continue on melting the crack out of Scion. Okay, he's gonna fire the big, big bullets now. Didn't get to fire off his lance. And I was kind of scared because his lance is a lot bigger than mine. Okay, we got another Tracer. I really don't like these guys. Well then, now we have Discharge. Which also makes a whole bunch of sense. Because I want my shields to be broken real quick. Gotta take care of the Eclipse, and also make sure, sure my drones don't get damaged up too much. That's a pretty good cash cow. Cargo train. Next up, definitely gonna take Magnitude and Payload. I need Charge Shields to make this build really epic. These guys are playing ping pong with me. Well then, now we have Fleet Commander. And like that, I now have six drones, and two of them are swole. Shield gone, shield back. Gotta recall the drones back. 
I'm gonna let the drones take care of this one. And sure, I do, did lose a whole bunch of health because I subsumptioned them into existence. But I'd say I prefer having a whole bunch of drones than having a shit ton of health. Time to really assail the crack out of Warbringer. Yeah, Warbringer still kind of remains a joke. An inconsistent dilemma of a joke, because sometimes he can be an absolute menace. Out of these, I'm really torn between explosive growth and improved thrusters. But I may actually take a explosive growth just because it's such a rare mod. Now that's done. We can take care of these guys. Okay. Gonna let the drones on the loose again. Well, a whole bunch of difficult choices emerge, like Evo Niche is awesome. Well, not really, it's not that good on Assault. But there's also Double Tap. But honestly, I think Drone Specialist is the winner. Now they have vulnerability and I can take them down faster. gonna force them into my into existence at the cost of my own hull. I'm using my own hull as a sacrifice to weld them into existence. Now that's done, we can probably pick up regeneration, because when I have shielded constructs, I will definitely need the regeneration when I'm taking hull damage, because my shield is no longer going to be protecting me. Oh yeah, gotta make sure the drones are far away from Seraph. Time to deal a whole bunch of damage to him. There we go. That was actually pretty quick for a Seraph fight. Gonna need them back in and just let the drones take care of this one really. Next up, gonna take care of these guys as well. And now I can pick up improved thrusters. Because I really want Tempest Break. Nice. That shield breaking effect is just really powerful. And the best part is, it gets even more ridiculous. Nice. With that done, now I can reroll around. Let's take Deadly Wake. And now I'm eligible for Tempest Break. Uh oh. 
I took a whole bunch of damage there. need to make sure my drones don't die out too quickly. Ah yes, mine layers. Probably the most forgettable enemy in all of Nova Drift. Definitely not, aren't going to be forgetting Myrmidons or even Interceptors like that one. And absolutely not the Vanguards. Those guys are awesome. Beamcasters are also very I iconic. And so are the Wardens for littering the screen with bullets if you have enough of them. If someone forgets the existence of tracers or at least their design I will have a lot of questions to ask for that person well then time to bring back the now we have charged shields and yeah my build is now a whole lot more powerful uh oh in my runs that I've done before I've not actually fought a freaking champion juggernaut this is my first time, and surprisingly went down pretty quickly. I'll let dr dr drones take care of this one. Again, gonna let the drones loose on this one. Tracers and their hard shield. Uh oh. Thank God for that meteor. Well, well, well. Imagine if I can, if I could combine revelation and explosive growth. Oh, that's right. I don't have to imagine it. Also, I really gotta make sure the celestial goes out before he tries to snuff me out once and for all. Whew. Way too close. Gonna will three drones into... Oh. Thank God for that screen clear. Mostly screen clear. Nice. Uh-oh. Gotta make sure I don't anger the bulwark all too much. Try to keep some distance and okay, brush past them and then get out of there when they explode.
nice. And like that, I took care of a whole bunch of Celestials. That was actually pretty darn tough. And now I have another tough decision. Do I go for all that double tap? You know what? Why not? Because now my shield effect is going to be absurdly powerful. Now I can get Tempest Break. That was epic. The epicness continues. Unfortunately, I really do need shielded constructs about now. Well then, I do have all of the shield effect mods, but I don't think, but I really cannot take polar, inver polar inversion just yet. Now I'm gonna be looking for, I mean I guess I can take efficiency, just for the sake of conversion. Because conversion will make this build a lot more streamlined. It'll give my, it'll allocate my shield into being hull. Which is actually a really good thing for this build. Well, that sucks. Uh oh. This one, I'm gonna have to rely mostly on my drones. Gonna make sure those shields go out. Now that the shields are out, I can wreak havoc. Really gotta love Tempest Break. If it wasn't for it, I may have actually died there. Well then, gonna have to make sure these guys don't roam too close to the oh no. Myrmidon subclusters, and there they go, along with the gyro guns and this mine layer and its escort. Uh oh, that could have been somewhat devastating, but still, I managed to beat it. I'll retreat and yep. Well then, let 
let's make fried noodles as well by frying up this giant serpent. Uh oh. This build is already ridiculous. But I really do want to imagine it once I have shielded constructs, apex machinery, and last of all, polar inversion. I really need to keep control though. There we go. Oh boy, it's the two chunky boys. Oh god, these guys can... Little, the little exploding crabs can do a surprising amount of damage. From now on, I'm gonna keep my sweet distance. I somehow survived that. Yeah, Dweller is actually a pretty tough cookie. And speak of tough, speaking of tough cookies, we have these two. They can survive a lot, can't, can't they? Now I'm gonna re-roll around and try to find... You know what, Volatile Shields also works. Because when my shield breaks immediately... Instead of having just one bolt, it's now gonna have a big old explosion. Yeah, immediately wiped out those hammerheads. A little, uh, not the best timing, but whatever. Gotta watch out and make sure I don't die or succumb to these guys. Well, thankfully, not quite yet. Although, these two are also tough cookies. More so Glaucus than the champion Juggernaut, but even so, I don't really like to fight either of them. Well, there goes the Juggernaut. I have to make sure I don't get burnt up. Thank God for the Comets. They really did save me a whole bunch of time. Even if I had to be a lot more careful on the battlefield. Well, gonna need uh, to regenerate again. There goes my shields again. Gotta retreat and... Now... What were we gonna face? Mm, yeah, some gyrogans and escorts. Okay, we gotta deal with celestials as well. Well, it's the two chunky cookies. Gotta retreat, and yeah. 
Now I have shielded constructs and well the constructs are mostly gone, but whatever. Oh yeah, the damage is way more ridiculous. <laughs> this is where insanity turns into obscene absurdity. The burn damage is off the charts high. Now if I have Apex Machinery and Polar Inversion, this build is complete. I will have everything that I need. And all will tremble before my might. And yada yada yada. Typical villain lines. Well, that was a lot of lag. A bit more lag. The game really cannot comprehend the fact that I'm doing this much chaos. Look at that! The two big buff cookies are back! Okay, the pushing effect in kind of backfired on me, honestly. Because they did just screen wrapped around and decided to bonk me. Way too close. I repeat, way too close. Gonna re-roll around and try to find either Polar Inversion or, yeah, Apex Machinery. Once I have polar inversion, a new kind of movement technique will be needed to be learned. It is simply called stay away from your constructs. Because when I have that, I will. the constructs will attract everything on screen. It's essentially the big crunch. And if you're unfamiliar with what the Big Crunch is, it's actually a hypothetical way of the universe ending. As in, the end of the story. The end of the real life story. The theory goes that... Eventually the universe will stop expanding because there's just so much matter and, and, and expansion will have to eventually stop according to logic. And once the expansion stops, it starts to contract back. The universe starts to shrink. And eventually, after billions and billions of years, the universe shrinks down and crushes itself into an infinitely small point. And if you're familiar with the concept of an infinitely small point, that is kind of how the Big Bang began. Before the Big Bang, the universe was pretty much condensed into that tiny, 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 infinitely tiny uh, singularity or whatever it's called.
And yeah, the theory goes that the universe has had an infinite cycle of big crunches and big bangs. And this will probably happen forever on. Because physics be like that. But unfortunately, more recent science doesn't exactly suggest this. Instead, the universe is gonna die a slower, less epic, and dare I say, more pathetic way of going out. It'll take a lot longer, but eventually the universe will get cold. It'll just... It'll expend too much energy. And so... Via entropy increase, the universe will eventually be re dissolved into subatomic particles and stuff. Which really is honestly a worse fate, because not only does that make the universe way more boring and mono monotonous, it's also kind of theorized that this fate will last forever. And from that point onwards, the universe is just empty. Essentially empty. Because there's no longer anything of interest. Which is why I called it a very lame death. It really is probably one of the lamest ways the universe can go out. Well then. But the Big Crunch build kind of emulates what would happen in the last few seconds of the universe as everything gets crunched up into one single point. And there we have it. This build is now complete. I have everything that I need. All I need to do now is survive. And make the occasional decisions in mobility. Yeah, this build gets ridiculous. Can add a few drones to the mix. These guys are gonna become jumbled up, sir snakes. Or they're not even going to be jumbled up. They're just going to be fried. Another implosion. Okay, that was way too close again. Not only did it take out the Scion, it also took out Glaucus.
another chaotic explosion. Well then, now let's take Grace Protocol. Because this will make it immune to damage for a single second. And I think in this chaos, even one second is a lot. Once again, Recursor is playing. Oh, yes. Wow, that was a lot of lag, and there's a gigantic mess of projectiles. Way again, make sure the uh, the drones are doing most of the heavy lifting. Need to, gonna need to summon in a bunch more drones. Time to fry Dreadnought. Well then, let's take absorption just in case. I would like a little bit more protection against gyro guns. Sure they're closely packed together. Oh yeah, that kind of gave me bad flashbacks of how I previously died. And yeah, I summoned in a bunch more drones. <laughs> I 
And just like that, I've hit my level cap. This build definitely is bonkers, isn't it? I keep my distance and yeah, just let them get deleted. Uh oh. That could have been devastating to me. I absolutely need a way of regenerating myself now. Because holy cruiser, I am getting pummeled. Nice. Ironically enough, the ridiculous f burn damage is actually probably accurate of the big crunch because the background universe, the background temperature of the universe is dependent on the density of the universe or something like that. And the smaller and denser the universe becomes, the hotter it becomes as well. So in the final moments, the universe is gonna be hot enough to like cook stars from the outside. It's gonna be hotter than the surface of many stars. So this is actually a pretty accurate name. And look at that, 3 million. In the previous runs, I had difficulty reaching even 2 million. But now, 3 million is really good. But with that being said, I questioned this build getting over 4 million. Because it's way too chaotic, it's way too dependent on luck, and if enemies are going to be the type that'll bang you up for dishing out a whole bunch of damage at once, aka bulwarks, those guys are known to end the career of this build. And eh, could do a better regression. I guess I could take a session, just for the sake of energized shields. Okay, gotta get out of there. So far though, the strategy of just running away from my drones is pretty effective. Yeah, I need a bit more drones. Uh oh. I nearly got folded there. Have a bunch more drones. Oh, 
Well, one of them get pre got protected. Let's farm these guys. Kind of idiotic for me to just stand between the drones and projectiles, but whatever. Oh no! Ah, come on! Friggin' bolt throwers also are a threat to this build. Whew! After several tries of this build, I finally got a respectable score of 3.4 million. Admittedly, I got very lucky with explosive growth and revelation combined. And you got a whole bunch of double taps. I also got kind of lucky with Drone Specialist. Overall though, this build is very much recommended. Even if it's not good for getting the best of scores, it just gives you adrenaline rush. And when you complete it, it is super epic to just, to just witness enemies getting crunched up and getting disemboweled and blown apart. With that being said, my name is Excalibur Heavy Battlecruiser, and as always, may the forks be with you all.